So, what did the moon ever do for us? Well, uh, it was in fact uh, there at the beginning. Uh, and as the Earth stands today in its current dimensions and form, uh, that came out of an event where a Mars-sized planet hit the early Earth and beyond that a huge explosion, the Earth as we know it now and the Moon as we know it now were formed. This is a schematic that basically shows you the process. The impact was extreme uh, and almost certainly reduced both bodies to a molten state and then over time they recongealed, reformed, once again became spherical and there's strong evidence for this in the fact that the materials that the moon is made from are pretty much identical to the materials that the earth is made from which sort of suggests that we were both made from the same event, the same point in time. Um, actually the one thing that should be said is whilst we talk about it as being our moon in terms of the size of the moon it's proportionately much bigger relative to the earth than most moons are relative to their parent planet and it's probably better to consider it as a two planet system and in fact the moon doesn't orbit the earth as such the two actually rotate about a common center which is actually beneath the crust of the earth it's it's not a simple fact of the moon just going around the earth one of the factors of the orbit of the moon and the moon's presence relative to the earth is an inherent stability that is derived much as a skater puts out their arms when spinning, then the orbit of the moon, the gravitational effect of the moon, stabilizes not only the length of the day, but also the axial tilt of the Earth, which would be a lot more extreme with the moon not there. And so it gives us rather more predictable seasons than we might otherwise have had. The moon was also a, a participant in the early days of the solar system when there was a lot of violent impact going on and in particular during a period known as the last great bombardment uh, the moon played its part in taking through its gravitational inf influence many of the impacts that might otherwise have, have hit the earth not that the earth was unscathed um, there's just less evidence on the earth today because of the effects of wind and rain and general erosion through weather patterns. The moon of course has no atmosphere, it has no weather as such so we can still see very clearly the suffering that it went through at that particular point in the development of the solar system. Now just to be clear, um, because many people aren't, um, the craters we see on the moon are almost entirely caused by impact through asteroids or comets hitting the surface. If you want to see evidence of volcanism, uh, then you look at the mare. Uh, mare meaning sea, because that's what early observers thought these areas were but in fact they are plains of volcanic lava. Uh, this lava spread rather further than it would on earth by virtue of the lower gravity of the moon and they are generally very much smoother than the uplands and the cratered areas of the moon. They're also generally somewhat younger um, in particular these uplands, um, areas around the likes of Clavius in the southern uplands are uh, much older surfaces uh, than the surface of the, the Mare. The moon still has impacts, about 300 a year, very small relative to the past, but they have been observed uh, and even imaged. Um, so it's it's 
it, it doesn't have the virtue of an atmosphere, which our atmosphere absorbs a lot of incoming material and causes it to burn up on entry. That doesn't happen on the moon. That whatever comes in hits the surface and creates an impact crater. The other thing the moon does, of course, is generate tides. We probably still have tides were it only for the sun, but the moon gives us much greater tides, and these tides have an influence on ocean currents, and through the ocean currents they have an influence on weather patterns. Um, and of course are quite influential in things like uh, fishing and sailing patterns and things that we have had to come to terms with over the years. The other benefit the tides derived was giving a foreshore which provided a temporary land-based area for life to make the transition from the oceans to the land, allowing creatures to develop from their fins to legs, from their gills to lungs, and eventually to live on the land surface rather than in the oceans and ultimately uh, become human beings. The moon also, of course, lights the night sky. Um, in the fairly recent past, journeys were planned very much around full moon. Even as recently as the Second World War, bombing campaigns were often timed with with the full moon in mind. Um, it's interesting though that as bright as the moon is, it's actually a very poor reflector of light. In fact, it's probably the worst reflector of light in the solar system. It has a very poor albedo or reflective in, uh, index. Um, but it gives a lot of light by virtue of its relative size to the Earth. It's obviously been very influential in the formation of religions, but it's also given a vehicle uh, to mark the passage of time. A single orbit of the moon is, of course, a month, approximately. Um, it also, as the months pass by, gives an extra um, sense of the passage of the year and has been used in conjunction with many of the brighter stars to indicate the times for planting seeds, harvesting, when rivers flood, all these variable things. Um, so it's made a contribution in that respect. By an absolutely remarkable coincidence, it happens to be the same size in the sky as the sun, which allows us to observe solar eclipses allowing us to see the sun's corona and back in 1919 it also allowed scientists to prove that Einstein was right because of the gravitational lensing effect changing the relative positions of the stars that were in the background during the eclipse. So it's been a, a contributor even to relatively modern day science. It, uh, you couldn't talk about the moon without mentioning romance. Thousands of songs feature the moon as a, a factor in people's romantic inclinations. Um, it, it has been in most of the early religions regarded in itself as a deity but also on occasionally in folklore it's linked to things like werewolves and wolves howling at the moon. Uh, and also with mental illness and madness, uh, hence the term lunatic, um, rather unkindly. Uh, and I don't believe there's actually any proven link between the two, but the term is still used. One of the things that people generally uh, considered was that the moon would be inhabited. I mean, this tracks back to the Greek philosophy, which basically assumed that anything and everything in the night sky was inhabited by someone or something. Um, and um, this did not change for many years. As late as 1835, there was still a massive hoax in a New York newspaper 
uh, where people were convinced that there was the potential to trade with the uh, inhabitants of the moon. Um, and this despite the fact that at that time there was plenty of good science that, that would clearly indicate it was an airless, dry planet that had no potential for habitability at all. But of course in our lives times, or certainly in mine, there has been life on the on the moon, there's been 12 men on the moon. Uh, unfortunately they didn't stay there very long and there was no aspiration at that time for a, for a long-term lunar base. Uh, it was all part and parcel of the now famous space race. Um, the, the object was simply to get there and get back again safely. Hopefully future plans are rather broader than this with, with the prospect of a, a permanent base and hopefully an ongoing lunar presence on, on the moon and the ability to use it as a base for further exploration of the solar system in general. Nobody who went to the moon came back unaffected by that experience, understandably, but in particular it allowed all of us to see our planet as it is, this small little globe floating in the vastness of space, still as far as we know the only inhabited planet in the universe, the only place where there's life, um, although the, you know there may be plenty of life out in the universe but we don't know that for sure. But what it does clearly state is we need to be very careful of this world um, because there's no guarantee that there'll be anywhere else that will match it in terms of its suitability for us as a life form. It may also provide a resource given that our planet is running out a lot of things that we need to support our current technology. And it's now becoming a very serious consideration both for the moon and also for asteroids to use them as a resource for some of the minerals and metals that we need if we're going to continue with the sort of technology that we currently use and aspire to use in the future. The presence of water, water ice at least, in the moon's poles um, gives the prospect of uh, a base which would be more self-sustaining because the water could generate oxygen, it could generate water to drink, it could also generate rocket fuel uh, in the forms of hydrogen. And the very best thing about the moon from the average person's point of view is that even a modest telescope will show you amazing detail. And it's a place we can all explore from our back gardens, even with a humble pair of binoculars. But if you're lucky, as I am, to have a decent telescope, then you can see amazing detail and you can capture those images and take great pleasure from it. I hope this has been useful and hopefully a bit thought-provoking. And I do hope um, that this is a rather better audio than the previous version. Thanks again.